So, a, a brief overview in explaining the beautiful names of Allah. So, uh, and there are many, many, many books on this subject. Uh, the, the most well known is probably Imam Ghazali's Maqsad uh, Asna. But that would take more than six weeks to get through. It take a year. <coughs> Ahmed Zawuk has a book on the smell of Hasna. So let's do that. Yeah, do any of this. So we chose this one. So let's start with the text and then interject the occasion. First, uh, so he starts with him a whole lot. And this one's by Ibn Masuyuti, if you have any internet. Ibn Masuyuti passed away in 911 AD. Was a polymath, meaning a person that knew virtually everything that could be known at that time. In our days and times, with the uh, specializing of knowledge, uh, it would be very difficult to be a polymath to know everything that's there to be known. Uh, but Imam Suyuti would definitely qualify. He was a great Hadith scholar. He was a great. Uh, Quran scholar, his name is Iqqan, Ulum uh, Quran, is probably the standard in that particular area. He was a great fiqh scholar, he actually thought he rose to the level of Mujtahid, but his fiqh teacher, Harman, in that regard, asking him a series of questions he couldn't answer. Uh, he was a great uh, linguist and a uh, scholar of Arabic. He has several very lengthy compilations and uh, related to Arabic language, all of its sciences. Nahar Saf, Balada, he was a great scholar of Usul. Uh, he wrote extensively, especially in Aqwaad uh, al-Faqiyya, Rahimahullah. He wrote and uh, wrote lit, he compiled literary works uh, probably the thing he's most uh, <coughs> distinguished for is his abridgment of uh, larger works. And so even this work uh, is considered, he even says it, we'll read it in his introduction, an abridgment of Imam Ghazali's work in the uh, beautiful names of Allah, uh, Rahimahullah. So Suyuti, uh, he, he was a he memorized the Quran at the age of eight. Uh, he started giving fatawa at the age of 27. But around the age of 40, and he was renowned for his scholarship, his teaching, his writing. Uh, but around the age of 40 or so, perhaps a little older, he retired to uh, the shores of the Nile, a little shack on the shores of the Nile. A river in Su, hence Suyuti, and he just worshipped Allah and, and wrote and dedicated his life to that. He was also uh, he was a Sufi. People uh, usually don't mention that, but he, he wrote a defense of the Shabbi Tariqa, which he was a member of. He was. And I, I should have mentioned first, he was probably one of the greatest Hadith scholars uh, who uh, compiled brief and lengthy compilations of Hadith. So Imam Suyuti was an incredible, incredible person. He's a Hujjah. So when we see uh, like these massive compilations of earliest scholars and people say, oh, <coughs> No one person.
person could do that, but if we look at Imam Suyuti's life, he compiled over 600 books during the course of his life. And probably at least 100 are, are extant. And the manuscripts and the printed books are readily available. Uh, probably 100 printed books alone, and which means what, 500 haven't been printed, which means what, is a great opportunity for all of you to dedicate your life to finding um, Sufi's manuscripts and doing uh, critical editing of them and then printing them, inshallah. <coughs> So he starts off, Rahimahullah, by listening to the uh, names of Allah. So it says, Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu taught, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Inna lillahi ta'ala tisatan wa tis'ina isman miyatan ghayru wahida Man asaha dakhal al-janna inhu wit' Yuhibbu al-wit' So, uh, Allah has 99 beautiful names, uh, 99 names, 100 less one, whoever, من أحصاها دخل الجنة. So, uh, based on a hadith in Al-Bukhari, لله تسعة لله تسعة وتسعون اسما يدون إلا واحد لا يحفظها لا يحفظها أحد إلا دخل الجنة. So the hadith in Bukhari, Allah has uh, there are unto Allah one hundred names, uh, ninety nine names rather, uh, one hundred less one. Whoever memorized them, whoever memorized them, من يحفظها دخل الجنة will enter paradise. Ibn Atiya, he says, and this is. Uh, Related, uh, Ibn Atiyah is quoted in Imam and Nawawi's Adhkar, Rahimahumullah. Uh, he says, Al Hifdu Yatadamalu al Imana diha, wa ta'adima laha, wa ragbata fiha. So he says, uh, memorizing them involves, includes having faith in them, magnifying them, and longing for them. And so longing for them. Longing to uh, to adapt to adorn oneself with those character traits to the extent humanly possible. Say Rahman, Rahim. So I, I long to be merciful. Al Alim. I long to be knowledgeable, etc. So in the Atiya says, Rahimahullah, all that's included in Man Yahfadha Dakhal Al Jannah. So, so he mentioned him, who, uh, who Allah, who Allah, who the Lillah, and Hannah, who Rahman, Rahim, and Malik, and Kudus, and Salam, and Mu'min, and Rahim, and Aziz, and Jabbar, and Mutakabbar, and Khalaq, and Bab, and Masur, and Musawib, and Kafar, and Kahar, and Wahab, and Razat, and Fatah, and Alim, and Qabil, and Basit, and Khaf, and Rab, and Rizm, and Mubin. السميع البصير الحق العدل اللطيف الخبير الحليم العظيم الغفور الشكور العليم القدير الحقيق المقيم الحسيب الجليل الجليل الكريم الرقيب المجيب الواسع الحكيم الحكيم الودود النجيل البعث الشهير الحق الوكيل القوي المتين الولي الحميد المحصي مبد المعيد المحيي المحيي المبي الحي القيوم الواجد الماجد الواحد الصمد القادر المقتدر المقطر المقدم المؤخر الأول الآخر الظاهر الباطن ولي المتعال الضر القواب المنتقم العفو رؤوف المالك المالك البوكي ذو جلال والإكرام المقصير الجامع الغني المضن المانع الدار النافع النور الهادي البديع الباقي ورث الرشيد 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 الصبور رواه الترمذي والبيهقي the Dawat. So this compilation of them is narrated by Imam Tirmidhi and Imam al Bayhaqi and the supplication. Wa fi riwayati, hadha al hadithi, ba'du taghirin min al-asma'. 
And so in the narrations of this hadith, there are some uh, variations of the words. For example, one of the, uh, another narration of Tirmidhi uh, mentions Al-Qadim, which is significant because there are those who say, when people say Allahu Al-Qadim, Al-Qadim is an innovation from the dialectic theologians. But it's related, it's a, it's a, uh, the, the, the narration is da'if, but the fact that it's in the compilation of Tirmidhi shows that it was circulating amongst the hadithim uh, before the compilations of, of the dialectic theologians. And so, one, there, there are other names that in this narration that aren't in that narration. I just want to point that one out because it has some historical implications in terms of the intellectual history of the um, and the claims that some people make in that regard. These will translate as we go along. So. <laughs> what does it mean? Bismillah rahim الحمد لله واحد الصمد المنزه عن الصاحبة والولد. So he says, all praises to Allah, the one eternally sought after, uh, the one who's uh, uh, removed, far, far removed from having a spouse or a child. بارئ uh, النسني محير محير رمان رمان ذو الأسماء الحسنى والصفات العليا أن وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إله أحاط بكل شيء علما وعلم آدم الأسماء. So it says all oh, oh, praises to Allah the one the one eternally sought after the one far removed from any spouse or any child. The one who has originated the breath of life, Nasan, the breath, and some say the breath of life, which is uh, a very uh, significant <coughs> in that people claim that uh, the physical stuff, how, 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 did, how did our ability to breathe evolve from this? To have some sort of organism that is like the blob to start <coughs> growing, multiplying. How does that organism attain the ability to have lungs and to inhale and exhale? It's a, it's a significant question. More significant is the question which also relates to this, of the consciousness. Like how do we have the ability to be consciously aware of Allah's existence so that we can long to adorn ourselves <coughs> by His name? How do we have the ability to uh, find some virtue in that adornment? How did that evolve from this? Anyway, Allah originated it. Uh, the one who gives life to the decompose, decomposed bones. The one who, comes, uh, who possesses beautiful names and lofty, at, uh, uh, lofty attributes, the highest attributes. I bear witness that there is no God except Allah. He is alone. He has no partners. He is a God who encompasses everything in his knowledge. And he has taught Adam the names of وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ الْمُسَّمَّى بِأَشْرَةِ الْأَسْمَاءِ وَالْمُرْشِمِ أَنَّ لِلَّهِ تِسْعَةً وَتَسْعِينَ إِسْمًا صلى الله عليه وعلى آله, وعلى آله الأخيار وصحابته الكرام الأبرار So he says, I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger who is himself named with the most noble of names and guides us to realizing, to knowing that Allah has 99 names. May the bed blessing, blessings and peace be upon my blessings of the blessings of Allah.
be upon him and upon his chosen family and his noble and righteous companions. Amin, amin, amin. And may Allah bless us, amin. his brothers and sisters. And to Ashabi, you are my brothers. My companions are those who will come at the later times who will believe in me never having seen me. May the peace and blessing be upon the brothers and sisters Amen. of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah bless us to appreciate that honor. Amen. La ilaha illallah wa ba'd. So as for what follows, فَهَذَا شَرْحٌ لَقَيْفٌ عَلَىٰ أَسْمَعَ لَا الْحُسْنَىٰ So this is a very uh, a brief uh, explanation of the beautiful names of Allah. وَادِحُ uh, الْمَحْفِ So it has very clear uh, wording. ضَاحِرُ الْمَعَنَىٰ His meanings are very uh, apparent. So it's, it's not, uh, doesn't include a lot of philosophical and technical uh, terminology and jargon. And taqabtu akhtarahu min al-maqsad al-asna. So as we mentioned previously, he says, I chose, I uh, selected most of it from Imam Ghazali's book, al-maqsad al-asna, uh, the lofty objective. Sammaytuhu al-rujalatu al-hasna fi sharhi asma' lahi al-husna. So the beauty a, a beautiful brief uh, uh, overview of the explanations of the beautiful names of Allah. And so and I, I praise that, I, I ask that it be completed with you. So he, he said, you should know that linguistically, ism, so we said in English, a name, is something that indicates a name, a beautiful thing. Al-Urfan, sometimes they say here, astalahan, so in the technical or applied language of the scholars, madalla mufradan ala ma'ana fi nafsihi, ghayru muta'arridan, so he says that the technical language of the scholars is something, its singular form indicates a meaning in and of itself. Because the dual and plural forms indicate two meanings, the meaning and two or more. So he distinguishes the singular form. It indicates a meaning in and of itself. So book, cup, jar. Microphone. So the word indicates an in meaning in and of itself, uh, but it's not subjected in a structure to a period of time. So the subject subjugation in terms of the structure to a period of time is what distinguishes the, the, the name, or we might say the noun, from the verb. So when we say the have to, the structure of the word indicates. Uh, uh, a concept going coupled with the period of time the past the habtu so if I say adhabu biman al hal so I will mustaq that so if I say adhabu is a concept going which is coupled with the period of time the present or the future whereas if I say book cup is a concept idea but is divorced or devoid from any connection with time. And so this is what he means when he says غيرو أو غيري متعرضن لدنيته بزمان So it's not uh, connected by its structure to any period of time. وَتَسْمِيَةُ جَعْلُ لَفْضِ دَالًا عَلَى ذَلِكَ الْمَعَنْ so naming, the process of name, tasmiyat, is to uh, uh, make that expression, book, etc., an indication of that meaning. So we can say book in the abstract, I can say book. Now I've applied that concept to this particular object. 
And so I've named this a book as opposed to the concept existing in isolation. So he says uh, there's a difference of opinion concerning whether uh, the, the noun or the name is the essence of that which is named or something else. So he said this is a very lengthy uh, issue that this particular commentary uh, doesn't allow for because this is a brief presentation. Imam Ghazali at the beginning, the first issue he deals with in the Maqsal al Asna is this issue. And in the Islam, I know that or they were that. Is it the essence of the name or is it different? So the, the choice, best summary of this issue is that it is other than the name when it's unrestricted. So it's not applied to a particular object. So he says that the, the great Imam, the theologian, Sa'd al-Tazani, he uh, engages in a very exacting study of this issue in his hashia. Uh, when discussing the verse of Allah, and he taught Adam the names of all things. In the Asma Allah Ta'ala, a tisata wa tisina, he alati ishtamala aleha, rewal to Bukhari, and Abi Huraywa, Tarani Allah, and Ibukala, Kala Rasulullah, he saw Allah, and he said, So he brings the hadith we mentioned earlier, uh, Rasulullah, so that the names of Allah, be he exalted, are 99. Uh, this is included in the relation narration of Imam al-Bukhari on the authority of Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, uh, when he said that the Messenger of Allah, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, Inna billahi tis'an wa tis'ina isma biyatan illa wahida. So Allah has 99 names. Then who? Which one? Yuhibbul which? And he is odd and loves the odd. In the other narration, in the Bilahi Tisat and Tisri and Isman, we attended the Wahida, Man Ahsaha Dakhil al Jannah, and the Witch, we have the Witch. So Allah has 99 names. Uh, 100, that's one. Whoever uh, memorizes them with all the that's involved in the Atiyah mentioned. And there are other opinions just straight up memorize them. So at the very least, we should all try to memorize these names. And if, if that conservative opinion is right, mashallah, fast track. <laughs> now I have to deal with the crowds. <laughs> so, that's the very least. We should strive to memorize them. And perhaps over the six weeks, that would be the homework. So each week, we take one-sixth of them. So the non-mathematically challenged, how much would that be each week? <laughs> 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16 and a half. So let's make it 17. So we do 17 a week. And so when we come next week, we we'll recite the first 17, inshallah. All together, jama'atan. So we do it all together. We do it like uh, the uh, the uh, the Thank you. A deal? Yeah. Yeah. Inshallah. Yeah.
<웃음> 아, 너무 좋은 질문에. 아, 나. So he says afterwards, so we'll, we'll go back to the hadith. Uh, and Rasul Qad and Rasulullah, he saw Allah and said, In the name of the Hadith, I'm going to say, Nah Isman, Miatan Illa Wahida, Man Ahra, Inhu, Witter, you have a witter. Man Ahsaha, A, Hafidaha, Dahal and Jen. And so he mentioned that Utitha Alehi, Illa Ahidiha. So he'll add he that. So he says, And these names, he is Allah, the one who besides, there is no God besides He. And that which is uh, conjuncted to that, to the end of the names of Sabur, which will come. So those will be coming in the context of the, the Shah. And Allah, he briefly mentions Allah. فَقَدْ وَرَدَ فِي التَّنْزِيلِ قَالَ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى هُوَ اللَّهُ الَّذِي لَا إِنَّ لَهُ الْمَلِكُ الْقُدُّسُ السَّلَامُ الْمُؤْمِنِ الْمُهَيْمِنِ الْعَزِيزَ الْجَبَّارُ الْمُتَكَبِّرُ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ عَمَّا يُشْرِكُونَ so he says, as for Allah, is mentioned in the revelation. So he says, be he exalted, he is Allah. And so this indicates, this, his name is Allah. al whom there is no God besides he, the, uh, the sovereign, the sanctified, the uh, one free from defects and imperfections. The one who extends safety and security and peace. Uh, the one who protects the mighty, the compelling, and Al Jabbar, which we get to mention in Juma a couple of weeks ago. And Al Jabbar is not just compelling. A lot of the names, so a lot of the names, there's a uh, Ismul Jalal, there's a name of majesty, Al Jabbar, the compeller. And coupled with the, a meaning of, ja, of Jabal, uh, a, mean, a meaning of, of beauty. And that's, yani we say, Jabal tul kasr. Like, I, I am min, I heal the break. And so Jabal is also the one who heals. He's the compeller, that's ja, ja, Jalal. And he's the one who reforms and repairs, and that's the Jabal. So a lot of names are like that. And so we should try and to just mention this here, adorn ourselves with these names. So in those situations that require strength and compulsion. Uh, so for example, uh, forcing a, a criminal to stop their criminal behavior, you have to compel him or her female criminals, to stop their behavior by force, if necessary, because of the harm they might do to themselves or others. And so that's you know, jalal. But we should also endeavor to reform and repair relationships. We should also endeavor uh, to, to help to repair hearts that have been broken and torn and, and, and wounded. And so that's also jabbar. So, Jabbar uh, al Mutakabir, the the one who uh, is uh, high and mighty, because say, I don't want to say arrogant. Shaitan was arrogant. Abba was tekbara, but Kanamin al Kafirin. But Allah Mutakabir, He's, he's, he's relegated unto himself things no one else can have, and so he's, he's above. And we should try to be mutakabir. Right? And many scholars said mutakabir, uh, that this is a name that has no human manifestation. But others, such as Imam Ra'iz and Abdul Salam, he has a book called Shajarat Shajar Ma'arif wa Ahwan. So the, the tree of spiritual. Uh, states and knowledge and states and one of the opening chapters he discusses that issue this issue adorn yourself with the, uh, the character traits and names of Allah and so he says a lot of scholars they say well the Kebri has no human manifestation but he says it does he says yani 
I'm saying the plural to include us. I know about that in that we elevate ourselves from lowly, lowly and petty things. So someone insults us and we get ready to insult them back, then we step back. We say, you know what? I'm better than that. At the Kebu I'm that. You know, they say your head is so big it makes the wood your blunt jealous. And you're getting ready to say, your mama's so skinny, she can pull a hoop in a cheerio. <laughs> and then you catch yourself and you say, at the Kebu I'm that. And so that's what the Kebu did. That's what they kept here. Like, I'm better than that. So normally you don't say, I'm better than this person. How should it be that? But I'm better than responding to that. You know, tell them they, they have a beautiful head. The male love is protected and preserve it. Then they're messed up. They destroyed their whole program. They're waiting for the comeback on urine. So, yeah, you told them about their head. Oh, you mean the good year? I told them. I said, what did they say? They already got the response ready, ready to do battle. Actually, they said, like, you have a beautiful head. And you know, Allah deserved it. They wish they had a head like yours. <laughs> now they're all messed up. <laughs> Spring start popping out. Boy. That's all of my life. I'm like this. Okay. Uh, so, Yuz just mentioned at this point that Allah is Alam, the Dat al Karima, is a proper name. So, Imam Suyuti doesn't mention that. We can imply that from the structure of the verse, uh, but he doesn't, he doesn't mention that. But it's a proper name. So, the name of the noble essence, the incomparable essence, the originator of the heavens and the earth, the one whom there is nothing like unto him. They say that he shape, but he possesses names and attributes. Yet, what what was singular basir? Yet he hears and he sees in an incomparable way. They say that he shape. His name is Allah. Who Allah? His name is Allah. And we think of his. We shouldn't think in a gender sense. We should think in a neuter sense, but with the masculine pronoun. Just as everything Arabic language names everything with a masculine. This is a book. So these things don't have a gender. A book doesn't have a gender. And a car doesn't have a gender. So it is a book. It is a car. But they have uh, pronouns that correspond in some context to gender. <laughs> and so another scholar says, <laughs> So the essence that's rightfully worshipped. So we were, because some people worship many things. Right? Some people worship money. Some people worship clothing. That's mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet Taisa, Abdul Dinari, wa Abdul Durhami, wa Abdul Khabisa. So, ruined is the worshipper, literally the slave, the servant of gold and silver, money, Khabisa, which is a tunic, sort of like what I'm wearing now, but without the sleeves, so like a squared off garment that the Arabs used to wear. Some people take great pride, but the Prophet of the said, ruined is the worshiper of these things. Because Allah is the one who should be rightfully worshipped. So people worship other things. There are many ma'budat, you will. But only Allah is rightfully worshipped. And so the name of the one who is rightfully worshipped is Allah. Azawajal. Mighty and majestic. Uh, so to finish the verse, Subhanallah, Amda Yushrikun. Glorified is Allah, far, far above that which they attribute to Him or join as partners with Him. So this is the proper name 
for the one whose existence is necessary for all other existence. It's only Allah. No other, nothing in existence other than Allah is necessary. It's contingent. Our existence is contingent. We don't have to be here. We don't have to be here. But Allah must be here. And Allah was always here. And without the existence of Allah, there's an infinite regress that makes all existence impossible. So without the existence of Allah, there's an infinite regress that makes all other existence impossible. So we need Allah. And even the atheists, the, the intelligent ones amongst them, they implicitly say we need Allah uh, so that we can escape the problem of an infinite regress. So Dawkins, right, he says, when asked where did this all come from, it came from an alternative universe. And I think that solved the problem. We could explain where this comes from, so we uh, aren't trapped in an infinite regress, it came from an alternative universe. Which it raises the original question, where did that alternative universe come from? And so you have a different sort of infinite regress. Well, where did the alternative universe that gave birth to your alternative universe come from? It's cut to the chase and admit Allah is real and Allah is wajib wujud. Allah. Allah is real and Allah is the necessarily existing being. al mustahiq li jamil al The one who deserves all forms of praise. So in the fact that alhamdulillah by because anything that we might praise, find praiseworthy in anyone or anything is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we might as well go to the source. Right. Anything we find praiseworthy in anyone or anything is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah is the one deserving of all forms of praise. And so Muhammad, the praise of the tongue, alhamdulillah. The praise of the limbs. In that, that's the praise of the limbs. Uh, the praise of our state. All of all forms of praise, whatever they might be, are uh, ultimately deserving. Allah is the ultimate one deserving those. وَقَدْ قِيلَ فِي تَفْسِيرِ قَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى هَلْ تَعَلَمُ لَهُ سَمِيًّا uh, so uh, it's said concerning the explanation of his saying, be he exalted, do you know uh, anyone named uh, like him? Meaning, do you know anybody uh, named Allah other than Allah? Do you know anyone, leg leg? Arm head, Allah. Uh, but I don't think that's on their birth certificate. <laughs> and I don't think anyone takes their explanation seriously either. So they say, like, you are Allah, brother. Arm, a eh? Leg, leg, L, L. Arm, head, Allah. Okay, mashallah. <laughs> so, what's your name, brother? I mean, Poochie Allah. Your sister, I mean, Deborah Allah, but there's no serious, no serious people have ever named anyone or anything Allah. Now, he, he makes a very interesting point at this here. He, he then says, عن التجاسر على إطلاق هذا الاسم الشريف على غيره سبحانه وتعالى مع كفرة الأعداء الديني ومعارضة القرآن الكريم. So he says that uh, the tongues and the hearts are restrained from a daring to apply this name, this noble name, to other than Allah, be he glorified and exalted. Despite the large number of the enemies of the religion and the opponents of the noble Quran. So, just out of spite, you would think someone say, Well, I'm going to name my baby Allah. But they don't do it. And he said, The hearts 
are restrained. And the tongues are restrained. Qubila lisan wal qulub. The hearts and the tongues are restrained. Allah, over all of the ages that people have existed on this planet. And think about that. Allah. Even the false gods, they didn't name the false gods Allah. They didn't say Nad, Hubal, Manad, Uzza, Allah. Or no, this one. No, Uzza can't be Allah. So, Hubal. No, Allah, La ilaha illallah. Waqaqila, ma da'a Allah ta'ala ahadun bismin min asmaihi ta'ala illa wa li nafsi da'i hafdun min al-ism al-ma'ruwi yutlabu bi du'aihi illa qawla da'i ya Allah. So he says, it said that no one calls on Allah, exalted is he, through a, a, a particular name from his names, be he exalted, except that the soul of the, the Dai has a portion of that name that's called on, uh, that's called on through his prayer. So if we say, uh, invoke Allah, look of Ya Latif, Ya Latif, Ya Latif, our soul will have a portion of gentleness and, and subtleness. Ya Rahman, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahman. Our soul will have a portion of mercy. But no one who calls Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, 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 Allah has any portion of that name. Because that's uh, in the view of many, and this one, Allah, the great name. There's khilaf on that, and he's going to mention that shortly. La ilaha illallah. Wa an arabiyyan, wa huwa, wa huwa arabiyyan and al akhtarina. So most of the uh, scholars of language and theology consider that this is an Arabic name, an original Arabic name. Wa za'ma al balqi, balqi claims. من المعتزلة is from the معتزلة أنه معرب that is a name that has been Arabized فقيل إبراني وقيل سيرياني so it's said that it's from originally from Hebrew and some say it's from Syria but the overwhelming majority of scholars say Allah is an original Arabic designation وقال البندنجي وأكثر أهل العلم على أن الاسم الأعظم هو الله. so بندنجي says most of the scholars say that the great name of Allah is the great name rather is Allah. we also have a shahada. one of the sisters wanted to take shahada. okay. alright. so we'll pick up here next time. الاسم الأعظم في خلاف لكن معظم جلدة وأكثر أهل العلم يقولون بأن الاسم الأعظم هو الله وقال بعضهم هو الحي القيوم هذا بس توت النفسي سريزة شهادة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وجهنا مانا and you're prepared in front of all of these witnesses to make the following declaration. I openly bear witness there is no God but Allah, and I openly bear witness that Muhammad is messenger and servant, a servant and messenger. And you understand that when you say, I openly bear witness there is no God but Allah, so in Islam there is no Trinitarian belief that Jesus is not part of that. Of the Godhead, understand. Come to that. So, so what I just said, you're going to say in Arabic. So, what you're going to say means I openly bear witness in front of all of these folks here. There's no God but Allah Muhammad is His servant and messenger. So, repeat after me: Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu. أن 
Muhammadan Rasulullah. We're going to do it three times, so, so just for make sure no one can tell. Ashadu Allah Ilaha Illallah Wa Ashadu Anna Muhammadan Abduhu Wa Rasuluhu. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. الحمد لله. You know I'm Muslim. It's official. تكبير. الله. تكبير. الله. تكبير. الله. So you know Sister Husay here. So stay close, that has to be your buddy, and other Muslim sisters, take care of her, alhamdulillah. So we don't want, we don't want excitement, shahada, takbir, Allahu Akbar. And then uh, our sister Monica, three months from now, she's suffering from post-shahada stress syndrome. <laughs> That's a real disease. It's up to you sisters to make sure she never suffers from post-shahada stress syndrome. Alhamdulillah. Barakallahu feek. Alhamdulillah.